Hello guys, Mr. Dandaman2050 here and today I am going to be giving you a £1,000 PC gaming build. Now, um, yeah, a lot of people have asked me if I can do a £1,000 build. Now, I don't know if they're going to take this serious or whatnot, but I have actually chose a lot of parts um, today to make a gaming PC, which is going to be just epic. It can play anything on Ultra. Um, now, I know from some benchmark tests that you can play Battlefield 3 with about 120 frames per second on Ultra at 1080p. Now do just do bear in mind the card that I've chosen, the graphic card can play most games at 1440p but do bear in mind you will need a 1440p monitor instead of just 1080. But um, yeah, I'm just guessing most of you will be actually playing your games 1080p but yeah, this graphic card, this build will play anything on Ultra with at least 100 frames or more. Um, some more demanding games like Metro or something like that probably less than 100 but it's going to be an epic build and just, yeah it's going to run, run anything on Ultra I just want to kind of repeat that again anyway to, um, to start off what we're going to do is we're going to get the Intel Core i5 the 3570K this is a 3.4 gigahertz Ivy Bridge processor for the socket LGA 1155 now this is a true quad core from Intel and you know it is an i5 quad core these are, these are just incredibly fast and it will support all the way up to 2.8 gigahertz ram and yeah it uses 77 watts it's just genius it comes with the integrated hd 4000 graphics and it's just is for what it is you can fit a lot of ram in here and as you can see you get a stock cooler with it now do bear in mind we are going to be liquid cooling this build so you know we're going to be overclocking this to at least four gigahertz i know it's the average bridge you might not get to four gigahertz i don't know what you'll actually get to with an overclock but it's it's a nice build and yeah this process is 177 pounds to me that's quite a like quite a lot off comparing it with 186 pounds the other day so what we're going to get is because we're going to be overclocking and this processor was actually the k version the k skew of the intel core i5 we're going to be getting the Corsair Hydro H60. This is um, a closed loop CPU cooler. So it's uh, it's all closed loop. The water's already inside. You just need to put the water block on your processor, mount the fan to the case, and there you are. You'll have a water cooled PC. It'd be really easy. Now, this is £60. And yeah, it's just, as you can see here, look, it's compatible with like r a ridiculous amount of CPUs. So if you do kind of, you know, want to use it in another build later on, you know, you're going to be able to do so very easily and just do bear in mind the new LGA 1150 socket that's just come out for the fourth generation i3, 5 and 7 it, it will be compatible for that as well so that's £60 um, yeah the closed loop CPU cooler it's just meant that you know, have water cooling it must be really easy to do you'll just love it now for the RAM what we're going to be getting is um, right I've made a mistake here well we're going to we're going to be getting 8 gig of RAM we're going to get the Corsair Vengeance um, the low profile, um, 1600 megahertz, it's DDR3 and it's a dual slash quad channel kit. Now, this was a mistake, um, please do you know, forgive me for this, but yeah, we're going we're gonna to be getting 8 gig and we're going to be getting two 4 gig sticks. Um, yeah, that will be £42, but it's going to be really good this and yeah, that runs fast, 1.6 gigahertz as you can see there. Cast latency is 9. So moving on, we're going to be getting the gigabyte. GA7, GAZ77DS 3H Intel uh, Z77 chipset. It's for LGA socket 1155, so the CPU fit in there nicely. It's 70, uh, 75, 59 pounds, and it's just got everything. It's got eight USB 2s, four USB 3s. It supports a load of processors in terms of the second and third generation um, Intel Core i7, 5, and 3. And it's, yeah, the RAM on this supports all the way to 24. Um, 2400 with a max of 32 gigs so it's easily kind of upgradable in the future now uh, yeah moving on from that we've actually for the actual gpu we're going to be getting the gigabyte winforce geforce gtx 770 it's an overclock version and has two gig of gddr5 memory the actual clock on this is uh, 11 37 megahertz and the boost clock is 11 89 megahertz meaning you know this is just going to power through any game and with as you can see here 1536 CUDA cores it's just going to destroy any game you should add it on ultra it really is battlefield's just going to look amazing and stuff like call of duty black ops 2 and even call of duty ghosts will run on this with at least 100 frames it's just going to be epic but you know for for a thousand pound or one thousand five hundred dollars whatever wherever you're from in the world it is a lot of money, but at, at the end of the day, you can keep this for a few years and it'll still run games on Ultra very nicely. Now, since we're getting such a powerful kind of GPU, we're going to need to get a 600 watt Corsair Builder Series. This is the CX 
uh, 600M 80 plus bronze modular power supply. Now it is modular, we don't want a lot of cables hanging out the back. So we can get a nice big case for this and you, your build is going to look nice in a case. It's not going to be all cluttered, you're going to have a lot of airflow. Because besides, just going back to this graphic card, it's going to pump out a lot of heat. Um, because chances are you are going to want to overclock this the same with the um, the CPU. But it's got three, th three fans, that's a big thing to point out. And it's going to be kind of blowing out a lot of hot air. So you want a nice power supply. Um, with like not a lot of cables at the end and um, kind of cluttering out your build so that that's gonna be a nice it's uh, 80 plus bronze um, certified it's not gonna blow up anytime soon it's Corsair they make good stuff now speaking of Corsair what we're gonna be getting for 93 quid now you might say damn 93 pound is a is a very expensive for a computer case but if you look at it it's really big it can fit anything in it it's literally and it's actually got fans on the top well you can actually mount that um, the actual if we just go back you can mount this uh, closed loop CPU cooler onto that at the top now if you want to get a H100 you can or H100i or even somewhat different like a H70 or not but it's yeah it's going to be a big case and you know the airflow in that case is going to be amazing and as you can see you can fit a lot of kind of hard drives SSDs and stuff like that into the case it's really big and it's got a lot of cable routing options so yeah it's pretty good um, I'm not sure if this has USB 3 um, um, yeah, it has two USB 3s on the front in terms of the input output ports. Uh, yeah, of course, I make some nice stuff. There's loads of pictures on this website. And, uh, yeah, 93 quid, not bad. So, moving on, I just want to say because this is a hundred, because this is a, a 1000 pound PC build, we're going to be going with an SSD. I think hard drives these days are just ridiculously slow. So, yeah, we're going to be going for 120 gigabyte solid state. Um, yeah, a solid state drive, it's just um, under £90 and the read speeds on this are 560 megabytes per second and the write speeds are 535 megabytes per second. It's incredibly fast and Corsair, as again, they make some really high quality stuff. If you have the Corsair Force LS series, is this is just going to be brilliant for a boot drive. Now, you know, SSDs are still dear, so we're going we're gonna to just stick with an 120 gig version. Um, for nano quid and as well as that we're going to be also shoving in a two terabyte seagate barracuda so yeah 2000 gigs uh, we're going to shove in there and that's 65 pounds and yeah just looking at them to think at 120 gigabyte ssd for 90 quid and a two terabyte hard drive for 65 quid it's insane hard drives these days are ridiculously cheap and i think you know there's kind of no excuse to have both in because you know, this is going to be a gaming build, you're going to be storing a lot of games on there, so 2000 gig should be enough. So that's £65. Lastly, an optical drive. I aren't going to babble on about this. It's an optical drive. You put your Windows 7 disk or your Windows 8 disk into this when you first build it, and that's it. You'll probably never go back to it again. You can play all of these formats I've just highlighted there. It's a ridiculous combination, and uh, it's just a drive. No one really cares about them anymore, quite frankly. But um, yeah, so that's the build, guys. The £1,000 PC build. Quite a few of you have asked me to do this. I don't know if you're serious. I don't know if you're actually going to watch this, but that's it. That's what I would put together if I had a thousand pounds in my pocket, and you know, wanted to do gaming with it. So yeah, an i5, put a Corsair H60 um, water cooler on it. I eight gigs of RAM, a nice motherboard, and put the GTX 770 on it. That came out in what March, I believe. I think it came out in March. Um, I think so. That's one, two, three, four, five months ago. It's a relatively new card. Um, but yeah, GTX 770, it's kind of this series, so that's good. Um, so yeah, that's all we put together. Thanks for watching, guys. Please feel free to like, comment, and also subscribe. Also, please do bear in mind, at the bottom, there's links for my 300, 400, 500, and 600 pound builds. They're kind of more realistic, and that's what many of you will kind of have in your pocket to build a nice gaming PC. So yeah, you can click on them in the, in the description, and I'll take you to them. They're kind of the same as this, I suppose. Um... Yeah, same kind of layout and style and stuff like that. Anyway, guys, yeah, thank you for watching. Please feel free to like, comment, and also subscribe. Cheers. I just want to say, guys, I didn't mention on there, but just if you look in the description, there's an actual um, kind of Excel kind of spreadsheet there for to look at. It's just showing you how much the, um, the parts cost in the US and in the UK and whatnot. Um, nice kind of spreadsheet there, and it's just a kind of more professional kind of way instead of like skimming through the video if you want to. Um, kind of show this to a friend or whatnot. You can kind of download that, open it up, and uh, yeah, it's kind of all automated, so you can kind of change figures and then kind of update at the bottom as a total price. But yeah, that's what I would put together, guys. as a thousand pounds. Thank you for watching. Please feel free. Please feel free to like, comment, and also subscribe. Cheers.